Who knows? Hey, Opa Heek, and of course, uh, Strangers. Yeah, I mean, I've had in mind to do the, um, to do the Otago for a while. Um, the next ship I've actually got planned, uh, will probably be the, the Buscovitsa, because I don't think I ever did a proper full review of that either. So, uh, yeah, that'll be a fun one to take a look at. Because there's, there's all these kind of all the premiums where it's either before I started really doing reviews or before I became a community contributor or else um, there was just too much going on so I couldn't get around to reviewing them because um, when I was a, a community contributor of course I was both one for tanks and warships and there were times when I had to leave off doing stuff for tanks and there was occasionally times when I had to leave off doing things for warships just because there was too much coming out at the same time so uh, yeah I had to prioritize uh, but other times it, it was just, I don't know, I was otherwise busy or I didn't have the time or, as I say, there's a whole bunch of stuff that came out before I was even a community contributor. So, yeah, but it was interesting to look at it, though, and, and to, it, it, it says something about the state of the game that um, it, as a cruiser, still faces the same, like, challenges that it ever did. Do I want that a bit smaller, actually? Yeah, let's have a little bit smaller. Um, so, you know, there's still the inherent issues that that cruisers have versus battleships and that battleships have in the game but given where it sits as a cruiser it's still a good cruiser and it hasn't been massively power creeped which can happen you know you look at the, the, the older premiums in world of tanks for example and you can find or even just older tanks in world of tanks you can find evidence of of power creep all over the place even though you know they have made some moves towards trying to to do something about that in some cases but not you know when i say that it it's not like it's always been effective when they've tried to make changes right anyway so this is the leo it has 16 guns uh, that's basically as many guns as like two Bismarcks put together, for example. Um, but they are a funny caliber. They're like 13.6 inches, uh, 340 millimeters, and uh, that's because they were kind of. Uh, my understanding is anyway they were meant as a, a, a counterpoint to the British 13.5 inch gunned ships, and we have. Two of those in game we have the orion and the um the iron duke have that caliber of guns so it's just that this is a you know two tiers higher <laughs> it kind of gets away with having that many uh and I, I i you know have played the preview version of this but now the the patch is live this is the actual version of the ship and i don't think it's too much different from the preview version so yeah i can start grinding for the richelieu so uh it's kind of grown on me a bit. It, it's definitely a ship where, barring some really spectacular RNG, you need to um, you need to have a, a slightly longer game because you need to get those salvos out to counteract the uh, the scatter shot effect of not particularly good accuracy. But uh, yeah, if you do get a slightly longer game, it's pretty good. And I think it's also one of the best French battleships in terms of its AA. I mean, it's not really a patch on the Geniser now in terms of its total uh, total possible DPS output but um, it's still pretty good if you go for an AA spec Lyon um, you can get some quite respectable AA power on this thing you can have I think actually even a slightly wider envelope I think it's out to what seven and a half kilometers and I'm pretty sure the Geniser now is 7.2 so you can have a bigger envelope, but your DPS is definitely rather less than the Geniser now gets if you're comparing the same setup. So uh, yeah, that that's definitely a way that you could that you could skin this particular cat if you like it's by just going full AA and then uh, just trusting to RNGs in terms of how scattershot your shells are otherwise. It does seem to be a, uh, yeah, the, the bent funnel seems to be a, a common feature of uh, French naval architecture. Or of French, you know, uh, warship designs. So there's a few of them that feature that. Hey, the King of Ming. Tanku. 
Um, Upper Heek, that was, that was actually the other coast from us. Uh, this is, <laughs> look at this, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm not expecting great things because it's a weekend, but even so, this is a bit, this is a bit pathetic. Never mind. Um, yeah, that was um, the West Coast, and uh, I think England generally got hit a lot harder than us. But the West Coast of Scotland as well is um, it's kind of buried under snow at the moment. Uh, we we did we did have a bit of snow yesterday, but it was like really quite powdery stuff, quite fine, quite dry. Um, so it's not been piling up like. Um, well, having said, having said the west coast, I mean, it's kind of like the northwest part, because my, uh, my stepbrother in Glasgow, I saw some pictures from him on Facebook where the, uh, the bits of Glasgow he's in. And if you don't know, Glasgow's actually built on a couple of hills. It, it's a bit like Rome, you know, Glasgow, Rome, the comparison is often made. But um, it's, uh, yeah, the bit he's on is on one of the hilly bits, and uh, uh it's just kind of turned the the street he's on into a, uh, uh, like a not not a ski slope, but you know it, it's it's quite steep and there's lots of snow and people have been you know like getting their sleds out and um, going down the streets because it's not like there's a lot of cars going down said streets. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna win this one. I just I mean I have a feeling. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good matchmaking, but uh, it's only so much you can do as, as one player. Actually, I probably need, need to put the third, uh, oh, no, maybe, yep, we had one zero damage over pen somehow. I don't even know how that works. I've heard of, you know, zero damage pens are a thing, but zero damage over pens are a bit less common. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is the team. I've, I've joined the team. They all seem to be having a final time down here. And uh, clearly they know what's up. So we're just going to hang out here and have ourselves a little party. A little picnic. <laughs> this thing's it, it's pretty good for, for broadside shots. Like You get a broadside like that guy's now over there, for instance, who's probably going to die before I can get my turrets around. But... Um, that's fine, but for bow on shots, it's actually like the dispersion makes it really quite annoying. So you really you're looking for those kind of targets as opposed to firing at bow on cruisers, at which point you're not really that likely to to get a lot of traction. Well, let's have a go with our middle pair of turrets against that Britannia, who's all the way over there. Yeah, I mean, it's, I figured that, Jerry. It's just, it's, it seems a very peculiarly French feature. Um, I don't know, most most navies just, I don't know, built the stacks well back or made them very tall or something. Although, talking of peculiar smokestacks, you only have to look at some of the experiment experimentation that the Japanese did with the carriers when they were trying to figure out what the optimal way to take uh, exhaust fumes away from, from the ship was. Some of their designs were um, not very comfortable for the people actually on the ships. Is the Lyon a decent step up from the Normandy? I would say so, yeah. I mean, it's just the sheer number of uh, sheer number of guns you get, basically. I would say this is the Fuso of the French line, essentially. Except even more so. Right, there we go. Figured to be able to finish that guy. We've got the bow on the grass. It's just barely making way. And come on, there we go. Didn't need a lot of extra damage to finish him off. Right, there's the enemy Leon. Got a Texas. With the one advantage of this is that we have a very big blob of firepower available. Whereas the enemy team's a lot more scattered. But as you can see, yeah, the... the oh, we're going to lose that Koenig, probably. Um, the, um, the angle required to get all of your turrets available is actually not that good. You've got to show quite a lot of broadside. 
Have they got any destroyers left? No. Unless you want to count the Bata. You can go from having 16 guns available to just four very, very quickly, but you can still have... Like, it's still not too bad if you, you can bring the front to at least to bear. Right, um, I mean, if we can get this Texas... They're all kind of focusing the Leon at the moment, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but we do need the uh, we do need the B cap. This might be a decent game, you know. I mean, it might still be a loss, but it might be a decent game even so. Oh, where's my mouse cursor gone? There we go. Tag the fighters. Are you turning back in? Oh, and there we go. It's just for the, for those kind of close range shots. You, ju you can just hit so many shells into somebody potentially that it uh, starts to matter a bit less. However, unfortunately my angling now is completely terrible versus that Britannia. There's an Iron Duke down there as well. I'm actually going to have to... Rather than going straight into the cap... Uh, which is going to take me closer to the Iron Duke, which I don't necessarily want. But it's better than having a Britannia and a Leon firing at my broadside. Yeah, everybody else is just kind of huddled at sea that's surviving at the moment, apart from... Well, we do have that one destroyer, I suppose. If I turn a little bit more... What kind of AA have I got left? Okay. Fair bit of my long-range AA, but some of it's been knocked out. That's the one big disadvantage of this, also, versus the Gunaiser now, is that um, the French dual-purpose AA guns seem to be a lot more fragile overall. They don't have that durability. We are just knocking seven shades of, you know, out of this Britannia. <laughs> Poor fella. Uh, it's not a great ship. Right, the Leon is in trouble. Um, I mean, we might do this. We definitely might do this. The carrier's got to be, you know, there somewhere. I'm going to now put the turn around of these uh, planes is. But as it's a tier 6 carrier... Oh, no, it's a Hiryu, actually. I was thinking it was... Okay, no, I was thinking, oh, it's a tier 6 carrier, no problem. Actually, no, it's a tier 7 carrier. And my AA's still doing okay. I do have an AA um, flag on this. So that's helping my DPS, but I don't have BFT on this captain. This is this is uh, Jean-Jacques Honoré, so it's uh um he's he's got the extra uh, turret traverse and I forget what the other skill is. Okay, yeah, this carry is not particularly someone to worry about. That's that's not a very dangerous drop, is it? He is using his fighters to keep the uh, the Fushan spotted, or try and keep the Fushan spotted, but he's using all of his fighters to do it. Right, the main problem is I turned all my guns around for that Iron Duke, and now there's a Britannia up there. So I think we'll, uh, yeah. And it is, like, the, the turret arrangement, like, too forward and too back means that you can actually always swing half your turrets around relatively quickly. And without the uh, the buffed uh, expert marksman, it would take a little bit longer, but not too much longer. It's not too bad in battleship terms at all. Right, we can we can we can win this. There's not a lot of the enemy team left now. Just waiting for the front turrets to swing all the way around. He is going to reset me though, but I'm blocking them from getting points, so it's not a big deal. Or, with that famous French accuracy, he could miss every shot. Yeah, if you're having to grind up from that thing, it's not going to be especially fun. There's the Kraken. <laughs> Just casually get a Kraken, why not? Alright, we're quite possibly going to lose that Königsberg. We've capped though, so the planes can't decap, which is fine. Might even get some more plane kills. We could chase after the carrier. But this Iron Duke does need to die. Can't really afford to ignore him. The Fushan's hanging on alright though. 
Most fighters are actually now hanging out in my AA bubble. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, he's going for the Congo. Which I guess might represent a slightly easier target. Right, um... Well, I guess we're going to see just how manoeuvrable this thing is. It was one of the nicer features of the Normandy. The Normandy's not bad. I wouldn't say the Normandy's great, but the Normandy's not bad. Um... But that's one of the, the things I, I do like about it, is is the it has a pretty tight turning radius for a battleship. And I think this is not too shabby either. But yeah, there's, there's not much to commend the Britannia, I suppose. Well, the Hiryu has done better at killing planes, apparently. He's just got himself a clear sky. He's been better at killing planes than he has been inflicting damage. Well, you probably are just weird then, Opahika. <laughs> okay, so we've we've turned this around and it's basically because we had that big blob of firepower, but also I think I may have... Well, I mean, I did get a few low health kill secures so uh, yeah it's it's not like this is a super amazing amount amount of damage 109k is pretty decent but we're top tier and the enemy carrier has not been very effective and the enemy team just fragmented and let it happen basically i'm actually quite tempted chaser to to buy the tier three except i'd, ha I'd have to unlock the tier three first just to see what the lower tiers are like. Tiers 3 and 4. Because you never know. They might be fun. Because sometimes they are. Yeah, he's just picking on the Congo at this point. I'm not sure what setup that is. Three fighters. Two dive bombers and like one torp bombers he's got I think I guess that's the fighter here you set up is it 222 two, two? I swear he's got three fighters or am I making that up oh 312 okay yeah it's 312 that he's got Oh, we're actually just getting into range. I think this Congo is going to get it though. This is not. This is actually a slower ship than the Normandy, but it's at 27 knots is still all right. You can't really complain about 27 knots. It's faster than the Nagato has. So be it. Jedi. Oh, and that's a that's a new sub, I think, or is it? Oh, I don't know actually. Syntax error with a pr uh, with a, a Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much. I'm not sure. I don't know how to keep track of that with with people like with Twitch Prime subs, and them using it, it you know on the same channel x months in a row. Because I don't does does it work the same way with Twitch Prime subs? I don't have Twitch Prime, so I don't know. Ah, uh, what a spoil sport! Can I? Oh, I might actually just be able to. Curve all of the oh Our look at that <laughs> oh baby oh oh I might need a moment oh oh well it was good for me I don't know about you but it was very good for me <laughs> that was um, something of a climactic ending let's put it that way <laughs> oh and wow that's a perfect uh, old scrotum thank you very much for the follow. So that was just a bonus, like, 34,000 damage at the end there. 144k. Kraken, high caliber. Uh, 29 plane kills, 2,500 base XP. Yeah, I think this might be one of the highlights of the line. This is not going to be a difficult grind. It really is not. Whoa, well, okay, that was fun. That was a fun ending anyway. <laughs>